Hey guys, and welcome to this video on how Metatables work in Lua. Now, this video is going to be uh, separate from my Lua tutorial series, uh, mainly because this is kind of a request video, and a lot of people have kind of been asking, uh, how do Metatables work, and what are meta methods, and how you integrate meta methods with Metatables. So, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to add this to my Lua tutorial series, but if I do end up doing that, then it's not going to be uh, added until I make videos up to this point. So, anyway, let's just start things off here. So, first of all, a meta table is just an ordinary table. Nothing about it is actually special or considered a meta table until you use the function set meta table, which looks like this. So, set meta table is a built in function in Lua which takes two arguments and it pretty much just attaches the second argument that you give it, which is the meta table, to the first argument, which is going to be the regular table. So, for example, if I put two undefined tables in here, like this. Uh, this is going to be the normal table, which is pretty much just your original value, and this is going to be its meta table. And the set meta table function actually returns the original table that you give it. So if I came in here and I said something like local uh, tab equals that, this is pretty much just going to say, all right, so tab is equal to whatever set meta table returns, and while it's returning this original table, it's also setting it to this meta table. So this would be an example of how you could quickly set up a meta table if you don't really care about uh, having some kind of reference to that original table or to its meta table. Now we could get this meta table if we wanted to, even though we've already set it without like defining it outside of this function. And we can do this using the get meta table function. So if I go on the next line here and I say something like uh, mt for meta table, and we say that equals uh, get meta table. And this function has one argument, which is going to be the table that you're trying to get the meta table from. So for its argument, I'm just going to put in tab. So now it's going to say, all right, let's see if we can find a meta table for tab, which is going to be this right here, since this is the original table, and this is what gets returned to this variable right here. So in this case, this table does indeed have a meta table, and that is what's going to be returned through this function right here to this variable. So now you're probably wondering, uh, what's the point of this? Why would you have to have one table attached to another table why not just have more content in that original table? And well, that's because the meta table actually isn't designed to store any kind of custom keys or values. So you can't just throw any data in that meta table that you want. This table right here now becomes special. So now that we've set this as the meta table, it only has the ability to do one thing. And that one thing is storing a dictionary of functions called meta methods. You can pretty much think of meta methods as Roblox events. For example, say you have a touched event set up on a part. Now whenever that part is touched, the function that was associated with its event gets executed. Now by no means are meta methods and Roblox events the same thing at all, I'm just using that as an abstraction to show you how this actually works. So let's see some examples of meta methods. So if you search meta methods on the Roblox wiki, you can see we have this uh, long document which goes over some examples of all the different kinds of meta methods. And it could seem a bit intimidating at first, but it's really not. They're just giving some examples of how you could possibly implement these meta methods uh, for just an example. But we're not going to focus on these for now. Uh, the two meta methods that we're going to focus on for now is going to be the index meta method and the new index meta method as we have right here. Now these first two are probably the most commonly used. Uh, you probably wouldn't be using the rest of these meta methods very often unless you have a very specific situation to use them in. But other than that, you're probably going to be seeing these two meta methods right here in almost every meta table you see in a script. And you've also probably noticed that each one of these meta methods starts with uh, two underscores, which is very important to remember. So whenever you're creating a meta method, just make sure that you have two underscores before its actual name. And let's start going over these. Alright, so using a different example from what we had before, I now have a defined table right here, which is going to be our normal table, and a defined meta table right here, which is going to be passed as the meta table to this set meta table function. And this will hopefully make things a bit more clear when explaining them. So the first thing we're going to go over is the index meta method. So we're going to go in our meta table here, and we're just going to put two underscores and index. And now the index meta method can actually be two things. It can either be another table, or it can be a function. But we'll save this for after, and I'll cover the table first. So let's say I want to index this table normal for the variable x. So we'll say print normal.x. Now already you can probably tell that x doesn't exist in table normal, so you're probably just going to think, all right, well, it's just going to print out nil, because it can't find x in normal, so it just returns nil, and that's the end of it. But that's not actually what's going on. What's actually going on is we're saying, all right, let's try and find x in normal. So we go over here. We can't seem to find x in normal. So we're going to go and check if this table has a meta table. And if it does have a meta table, then check and see if it has a index meta method. And if it does have an index meta method, then just return whatever that index meta method returns. 
So the index meta method is only going to fire when a value that's indexed in the normal table or the initial table doesn't exist. So let's say I come in here and I'll say, let's just define x as 1. And then I execute this and you can see in our output we have 1 printed right here. Now if I go over here and remove this and then run this, you can see in the output we're going to get nil since we don't have x defined anywhere in our table or the index meta method of our meta table. But now let's say I want to put x in the index meta method table. So I'll just come in here and I'll say x equals hello. And if I run this, you can see in the output window we're going to have hello printed as it is right here. So let's just quickly recap of what we did. So right here we have print normal.x. So we're simply just going to look in this table and see if x exists, which it doesn't. So now it's going to check if it has a meta table, which it does, since this is what's set right here. And since it has one, then it's going to check for an index meta method. And if index is a table, then search inside of this table for that value. And if that value exists in this index meta method table, then return that. So you can kind of think of it as a default value. So if I came in here in the normal table and I said x equals uh, custom, and let's just say I change this string value to default, and if I run this, you can see we're going to have uh, custom in the output since x exists in normal. But obviously once I remove x and then I run this, you see we have default. So now that we got that out of the way, let's see what happens when the index meta method is a function instead of a table. So we'll say index equals function. And this function has two parameters. The first parameter is the table in which the meta table is attached to. So in this case, I'll just put t. So in this case, our parameter t right here is going to represent our normal table since that's the one that is attached to our meta table. So just remember that the first parameter is always the regular table. And the second parameter of this table is the key that you're trying to index the table for. So we're just going to come in here and say k for key. And there we go. So this is the function that's going to run when we index this table for a value that doesn't exist. So once this function runs, it's going to return whatever the function returns to where it was indexed initially. So to demonstrate this, let's just go in our function here and we'll say print uh, tried to index table for, and then we'll concatenate that with whatever our key is, and then we'll just say does not exist. So now let's run this in the output, and you can see if I run this, we have this text right here saying tried to index table for x does not exist. And then obviously this function didn't return anything, so our value right here is just going to default to nil, as it says right here. So let's go ahead and make this function return something after this print function. We'll say return default. And if I run this, you can see that in our output window, we're going to have the same message, except this time it prints default instead of nil. So you'd only use a function for the index meta method whenever you want to make something actually happen or execute if a value that you try to index in the initial table doesn't exist. So if you're not going to have anything extra happening, then you can just have your index meta method be a table, which will just return whatever default values you put inside of it. So that's actually going to wrap up this video. Uh, I thought it was going to be longer. I actually wanted to cover the new index meta method as well, but there's just not really enough time right now. But I more than likely will be making a lot more videos on meta tables and meta methods if a lot of people really still have uh, questions about them. So if you're confused about anything or you have any questions, just leave a comment or you can private message me and I'll see you guys later.